This is W5HRO with part four of my homebrew transmitter project. I, uh, I'm, I'm switching this thing from working on 220 volts to 110 volts, or 120, you know, 240 and 120, I think is what they call it nowadays. I've already got the uh, new power cable on it. This came from a high power uh, tube guitar amplifier. I went to a music store and found this heavy one. Nice one, and I've got it all wired up. I replaced the old, what I had was, I had a, one of those old four prong 30 amp dryer, it was heavy duty dryer cables, like industrial cables, and there it is down there. And I went ahead and I shorted the white, I mean the uh, red wire to the black, but I ran into a problem. I started working on this yesterday morning, and I still am trying to figure it out. I think I determined what's going on. Um, you know, with 220, you've got the red, the black, which are both hot, right, and the neutral. And you've got 110 from the red to the neutral, and 110 from the, you know, black to the neutral, and across the red and the black, it's, you know, 220, right? Double. That's how it works, and then the green's the ground. Well, what I didn't count on is I used solid-state relays behind this front panel years ago because I hate mechanical relays for plate switching. I don't like to hear the big snap clunk, and the, I like ele quiet electronic switching. So I used two big 40-amp relays. Well, the way the transformers, the these two plate transformers were wired, it's just, you know, it was just using these two wires, right? It's going across from this one to this one at the primary on both of them. Well, you know, I had one relay that was in between this wire and one relay that was in between this one. So it's both of them were normally open. Well, what's happened is when I've re since I switched this thing over, I basically have, sh you know, made the red and the black the black. And now you're going from the black to the uh, neutral, which is 110, 120, right? So uh, it's, it's going from that neutral reference. And I'm seeing what happens is, I'm seeing the voltage going on both sides of the relay contacts, the electronic relay contacts, even when the relay's not engaged, and it's, the whole thing is messed up. And I, I've been racking my brain. I mean, I, I traced everything down. This is the set that goes back to the, the panel. I don't mean the panel, the, 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 the power strip in back that powers up everything else. And uh, this is all connects together. And the way I designed it years ago, that's it was working fine because the transformers saw two open relays normally until I went to hit the push to talk and then it would connect both of them, you know, they'd jump them both to the, the primaries. <coughs> well, when you switch it to 110, it doesn't work like that anymore. So what I'm going to have to do is, and I think I determined how to make it work, I've got to switch both the black and the, pri and, and the neutral, the w black and the white both, just like I did before to make it work correctly. And it's, it's the point of the reference, you know, the, it's, before I was going from the red and the black, now I'm going from the white to the black, and the white, the neutral's the issue, that's the, it's alternating, right? <coughs> so you never know what it's going to do, um, in any given state, what you do, it's just, you know, as long as you know what the other one's doing, but anyway, uh, <coughs> so I've got it out in the garage, I'll go out here in a minute and show you that. Here's a T368 uh, exciter. I got a brand new 6000 tube in here and I've been looking at the schematic and there's the SB10 sideband adapter. I took it apart, I was gonna go through and refurbish it. But I've determined that that sitting next to this side by side will not fit on the new panel with. What I've done is I've ordered a brand new panel just like this one, just a replacement. And uh, Another one of these gray relay, uh, relay rack shells. They still make those, believe it or not, same ones. So this old bias supply deck's going away. Well, originally what I had done is, when I, when I first designed this transmitter back in the mid to late 80s, I, uh, you know, I couldn't find, it was hard to find parts. This is, you know, well before the internet. And it, it all, uh, the only place you could find parts was, you know, a few, a couple, two or three of the catalog places that might have them. And then like for T368 parts, fair radio, well, half the time they were out of those transmitters and parts, right? So 
some, you know, when they'd get some in, they'd go pretty quick and you'd have to call them and you just have to get lucky. And so when I designed this thing originally, I couldn't find the exciter. So I thought, I'm just going to drive it externally with a, you know, another transmitter, low power transmitter like a Johnson, just RF excite it with something, right? So I did link coupled input tuning at the 4400. And, uh, but this power transformer, it's a Hammond, but that is actually the same voltages and the same, everything's the same as the uh, T368 power transformer. So I built that supply originally for a future use for if when I eventually found that exciter. And I had the, the connector there, the octal socket. It was going to jump over to here. And if you come around the back side of the cabinet, there it is there. <clears throat> I was going to hook it up remotely, you know, when, when I eventually found one, if I ever could, or something similar. <coughs> well, what I can do is I can just drill one more hole below that, and that'll be the connections for the SB10 adapter, and I can power it up that way if I need to. So I can just make this thing you know, external, but it can, I, can, I can make it to where it'll connect to it and grid drive it. So that should work better because what I've determined and the determine is the best thing I could do is is uh, put this uh, T368 exciter right in the middle of the front panel. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a knob for the uh, you know grid drive control. It's going to uh, I'm just going to, you know, put a, a resistor or control circuit for the screen voltage on that 6000 tube. And oh, by the way, I do have tons of 6000 tubes. I got five of them right here, and these have all been tested. These are new old stock, never used, and I've got that new one in there. So I do have 6,000 tubes, like enough to last me a lifetime, probably. So uh, the rest of my lifetime, anyway. But I'm going to try to get this thing all powered. I mean, I had it all powered up. It's just I can't get the plate transformers to switch properly because of this, the, this change from 220 to 110. So let me go out in the garage. Do I have anything else here? I don't think so. I'll, there'll be another. There'll be a part five when I get the new uh, the new rack and I start mounting this thing on it. Because I'm gonna with just having this thing on that new rack, it'll be nice because I'll have plenty of room for the power transformers and I can build the supply for the negative peak limiter and all that stuff too. I can just put it all on that rack. So let's go out here and I'll show you the uh, issue with the uh, the. Uh, uh, power, uh, whatever you want to call it, the power control panel at the bottom of the uh, transmitter. There's the relays. See, I had one, it just was in series with the, uh, the black, and the other one was in series with the red. These were hooked up different before, but what I've determined is I think that's because I'm now going from, so when I clip the voltmeter to the, to, to the, uh, the neutral, you know, and I touch this one, both of these, no matter what I do, these are either, the inputs are either on or off. It's just short. They're just, you just see a short. It's because it's, I'm going from reference to that neutral lead. So I have to fool the, the transformers again by, you know, redoing it. And I'm going to make this one, I'm going to make, I'm just going to leave the wires red, but this is going to be the neutral and this is going to be the hot, the black. And uh, what I'll do is I'll make this switch because if I go to run the sideband adapter, I, w I don't want the, uh, the, the the plate transformer for the 810s to come up, right? You want that the, 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 that the modulator off, so I'll, I'll have that so I can just, this will go to the transformer here, and that'll work fine. I think what I can do is I'm going to make one white, I am going to change these. I'm going to make one white and one black, and then one of them will be white. So one will do one, one transformer, and the other will do the other one. So I'm going to work on that now, and I think that'll probably fix it, I hope. And uh, once I get it all power, get it all rewired, I'll uh, hook it up and I'll uh, see if I'll get it to work, and uh, hopefully I can make another video with everything lit up again. So this is W5HRO.